Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Anthony from CCAEJ, and you're listening to Let's Clear the Air. I'm here with my boss, <laughs> Alan Hernandez, executive director. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, no problem, man. We're going to talk about what life was like in Fontana before the goods movement brought all these warehouses to our community. As y'all know, there's a lot of warehouses that currently sit in Fontana. The mayor, Aquanetta Warren, has prioritized the city for this kind of development, and it's having a lot of negative effects on residents in the city. So, Alan, so yeah, I mean, you, you grew up in Fontana. Tell us a little bit about how it was like growing up there. Yeah, man. So, you know, my family and I moved out to Fontana, gosh, back in, you know, 1983. I was three years old. Um, and um, actually, my sister's first birthday party, uh, when she turned one, was at uh, the Harupa Hills Regional Park right there. You're on the border of Fontana and Rupa Valley. Um, so this is what I've known, right? I've only left Fontana to go to, like, college and when work took me elsewhere, right? Um, but for the most part, I've been here. Um, I saw the rapid growth the city went in, um, sometimes good, mostly bad. Um, you know, I... I, I Harken back to the days like in South Montana, you know, when I was younger, uh, my parents are from Guatemala and there were uh, parts in Fontana where you could go, uh, little ranchitos, uh, kind of like what Bloomington is today and that's kind of disappearing with the warehouses. Fontana went through that same thing. Um, you used to have the little ranchitos and, you know, uh, you could go down there. Um, get get some eggs from like the ranchos there like the, the the farmers there had their own chickens and everything like that uh if you wanted uh to get a chicken you know you could get a you know free range chicken there like just wow it's crazy. Just amazing goats everything um and it's where we used to go and it was very community like like when we went there you know, my mom and dad would sit with uh, um, with the landowner there, with the rancher, Don Polo. And I remember Don Polo let me and my sister just like run around the ranch. We would play with the goats. We would like uh, look at the, what the ranch hands were doing and everything like that. It was the first time I'd ever seen how they prepare a chicken, uh, wow. all of that kind of stuff, right? And we used to play with the dogs on there in, in the ranch and it was just, awesome it felt like community um very healthy lifestyle and as time went by you know these hunches were everywhere and you know as we started heading into the late 90s uh early 2000s they started kind of disappearing and you started getting a lot more truck traffic now fontana has always been a trucker town uh, but it wasn't to the extent that it is today, right? Um, where they absolutely dominate the highways, the streets, everything. And so, you know, these ranchos started disappearing, uh, which meant they took everything with them. So the trees, the bushes, everything you would imagine a ranch would have was gone. So I get replacing, replaced by these like big structures with white walls, you know, kind of like started looking like a, like an asylum, right? Like, um, and for those of us who are here from those times and remembering that, remembering like, wow, this used to be a community and now it's more like a transactional kind of business center. It's really not only declined our air quality, our way of life, but just the way we interact with each other. Do you feel like back then that because of the more, it sounds like Fontana used to be more rural, right? I mean, there's mm -hmm. still pockets of, of, of Fontana that still kind of have that rural aesthetic mm -hmm. to it, right? But do you feel like back then there was more of a kind of like a close-knit culture among mm -hmm. neighbors as opposed to now? And do you feel like a lot of that has to do with just the kind of development that's been taking place in the last couple of years? Yeah, it obviously, you know, we... Uh, back then, uh, you know, it, it still had a small town feel. Everyone knew everyone, you know, uh, and you knew someone through someone anyway, 
right? And so, like the leaders we have in Fontana now, you know, I was connected with them one way or another when I was younger. Um, and I believe, you know, it, you know, not to talk about just, you know, like, not to like shine a negative light on, on progress, but, you know, we need to talk about the kind of progress we should have had in, um, in Fontana, right? Um, you look at what Rialto's doing on its north end uh, with the new movie theater, the restaurants, uh, the department stores. Um, you know, I mean, not to say that they're not doing, I mean, they're also building warehouses at large amounts, right? Um, at large scale as well, but you look at that kind of stuff, stuff where people have to interact with each other, hang out with each other, like that's the kind of development we should have. And I don't, you know, it's been a while since we've had that type of development. Definitely not under this mayor's administration. We haven't seen, all we've seen are warehouses. And that's even encroaching on, you know, we look at the West Valley Logistics Center, that's even encroaching on parts that aren't actually Fontana, but they've given Fontana jurisdiction over you know, like what we have right now is uh, an administration run amok on just trying to get the warehouses everywhere. City leadership, they have an agenda, and that agenda is to appease the logistics industry. Do you think that there needs to be a shift in the way that we develop warehouses? Because at this point in time, it's almost, it's, it's almost difficult to even say that, you know, we could push back against the warehouse developer, right? Is there a way that people could maybe ask for developers or maybe continue to pressure the city council to, to, to be a little bit smarter about where they're building this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you, you take a look at the siding, right? Like, you look at what the county just did with the Silver Distribution Center, putting it right behind homes, right next to a high school. That's, that's, it doesn't take a rocket science to know that's just bad policy. That's just bad planning. Right. Fontana is doing a lot of the same. Actually, they're doing, you know, what our former AD, Penny Newman, has coined, right, uh, industrial gentrification. Right. Like, you look at gentrification in the urban areas, and then you look at gentrification here, we're actually being priced out and, you know, bought out by developers who are planning to build warehouses here. Right. I remember when... I was younger, all the industrial use kind of stuff was on the west side of Fontana. And it still is, right? You could still go see some junkyards there, the steel mills there. You know, the, there's that whole section on Cherry, San Bernardino Valley, right? And, you know, with proper siding, that's not an issue. You're keeping that away from homes. You're keeping that away from schools. You're keeping it industrial. And we've seen a trend in the last decade or so where that doesn't matter anymore. Now they're just, you know, they're gonna build them wherever there's an empty lot. And that's not okay. Also, you know, I mentioned the steel mill. Even when, you know, you had sources that were industrial areas and, and contributed to pollution, um, they were still cited where they should be, right? Where they did the least effect that they could on human population. But these places were also union places, right? You know, you think of the legacy of the steel workers in Fontana, right? And, you know, these, these, these jobs were jobs with dignity, were jobs with where you could raise a family. There was a point in Fontana where you could actually, like, raise a family and live in the city and work in the city. Um, you drive down the old streets in downtown Fontana, like down Nuevo, down those streets by the Metrolink, and you'll see how wide they are. And those were built strictly for uh, steelworker families to park their trucks, to park their work trucks, to park, um, um, and, you know, whatever you, you may have, right? But um, you see it in the city. Um, it was once a time of progress. And what we're seeing now is like just, you know, folks having to commute out. You know, folks having to leave Fontana to go find a job to raise their family in somewhere else. And that's not, 
the way it should be. So you, what you got now too is like you got this false argument that it's labor versus the environment, that it's jobs versus health, and that's just wrong. I mean, we used to do it the right way, which was like, look, it's it's jobs and health, right? Right. We we understand this 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 city needs to operate and everything like that, but just cite it properly and keep it away from schools and, and, and homes, you know? Yeah, and it's it's interesting because there's people in the city, and not just in Fontana, but the entire Inland Empire, right, our entire region, you have individuals that see this kind of development as progress without necessarily knowing the full, full ramifications and even figures, right? Because this is not just... This isn't based out of emotion. This is based out of actual facts and figures that have been provided, that have been studied by researchers at UC Riverside and other uh, mm -hmm. universities here in California, mm -hmm. right? And you still, even then, you still have a lot of people that believe that this is the way to go, that, yep. oh, well, there's no other way, right? We've had numerous people, you and I, mm -hmm. approach us um, calling us fakes and you know accusing of accusing us of all these different things but i mean what do you say to those people that continue to continue to believe in this myth that this is something that is beneficial for our community you know it's 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 staged and it's planned they used to call penny newman a hysterical housewife because of her fight um here at the acid pits right Look at us now. It's going to take 400 years to clean up those acid pits. Like, you can't tell me that's based on emotion. That's science. That's science, and it's saying 400 years to clean up the mess these polluters made, right? Clean up the mess that string fellow made. So, we've got the same thing going on, you know? Uh, their tactic is, you know, let's question their sanity let's question their motives um because we can't question the facts because the facts are there but we're going to guise it under the you know we're going to we're going to hide it under the guys that that where that we're the rational facts-based one and they're the emotional community members who don't know much about facts right to me this is this is this is their plan right and of course it's going to get emotional we're the ones that have to deal with it Course. Right, I, you can't tell me that um, that taking your small child to an emergency room for an asthma attack doesn't elicit any kind of emotion from you, right? They want to talk about emotions. Lack of emotion are traits of, you know, are proven traits of psychopaths, and so I, I would question our our electeds and our folks who have no emotion when they have to vote on things like this, where is their mind at? Absolutely. And I think, um, yeah, going back to that, I think people are elected. People are elected to represent their communities, right? And when they're running their campaigns, they're running their campaigns on, on emotion, right? When they're mm -hmm. up there and they're talking about their platform, mm -hmm. That's all of that. Well, not all of it, right? But a lot of it is based on emotion. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you. I think the whole idea that people should just stick to the facts and, 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 and say factual things is, to me, is just kind of like a slap in the face, right? But at the same time, I think, um, you know, we know, we know our facts. And I think the way I view things is that... Um, uh, these elected officials that say that are choosing to believe specific facts, right? Yep. So they're choosing facts, right? As mm -hmm. opposed to looking at all facts, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you look as an elected official, right? Someone that's supposed to look at multiple mm -hmm. perspectives, the whole idea is to look at all facts, but they're choosing yep. to look at one side. So that should indicate right there that they're playing a one-sided game, and that one-sided game is appeasing to developers and appeasing yep. to the industry, right? Yep. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, my my next question is for Fontana, you know, there are some, some positive things coming out of Fontana, right? You have 
and you I mean you came out of Fontana right you're the executive director of, of this very great organization um, and there's other people out there as well I mean what what's your future outlook for Fontana do you think that there will be a point where you know you'll have a change of a political landscape and do you think that will lead to some kind of positive change right and and will that lead to uh, a redirection right uh, I'm not saying that warehouses will completely be gone right I, I mean you know but is this do you feel like Fontana will eventually go in the direction where you'll see better development perhaps more green zones right more parks more community centers I mean what's your outlook for the next couple of years well I, I hope we can get to that point before it's too late right we're, we're, we're running out of land Right, it's it's being zoned and rezoned and re rezoned for warehouse use, right? And we're running out of land here, and I'm I'm hoping we can do something before it's too late. I hope we, our city leaders can wake up before one day they realize they can't eat money. You know, like I think there are a lot of great folks in Fontana. I think there's a lot of great leaders in Fontana. And the time will come when, when we will be able to out-organize the money that's being poured into Fontana by outside interests, by developers, and combat that with community organizing and have the right people in office. My hope is that it's not too late that that it's not too late where all the land has already been sited or used to be built or for warehouses, right? So I do have hope. Um, I just think we're on a very short timeline. Yeah, and I mean, it's, um, it's, it's not an easy thing, right? There's a conundrum, you know, in a lot of ways with, with the warehouse, with, with just the logistics industry, right? Because there's also that potential to transform the industry make it into something that actually benefits the entire community, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of, you know, a lot of people will say that that's a little too ambitious, a little too pie in the sky, but, there, you know, the technology is there, right, to mm -hmm. transition, right, and move away from diesel trucks. But I think ultimately, I think we need to prioritize another form of development and not necessarily put all our eggs into this industry, right? Mm -hmm. Because... You know, my fear, right, and maybe this is just something out of left field, but I feel that we're going to get to a point, if we're not careful, where we're going to be building warehouses, and these warehouses will sit empty for years and years and years, right, and we'll end up being white elephants of sorts, right, mm -hmm. that just sit there and have no uh, tenant or no person occupying that space. Mm -hmm. And then from there, what are we going to do with it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I sometimes fear that because it's like, well, you know, clearly, you know, you know, currently there's there's other entities, right? You have like ICE, you have CBP using distribution centers and warehouses for, for housing people, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's, you know, it's like you're saying, they're planning this out, right? Mm -hmm. And my fear is that, you know, they're building these warehouses, right? And it could be for the time being for something that serves the logistics industry. But they're going to find a way to occupy that space, right? If the space is not being uh, occupied by certain entities, right? Mm -hmm. And, I mean, my whole thing is why even build that in the first place if, mm -hmm. if there's this uncertainty of development, right? And whether this is going to be good development or not. So, I mean, it's it's definitely a, a, a difficult thing, but, I mean, I think that's why we do what we do, you know? Exactly. Um, and I think, um, yeah, I think a lot of people in this city and in cities all across the region, in San Bernardino, in Fontana, Rialto, Urupa Valley, um, you know, they're, they're clearly emotional, right? But they're emotional... Right, but they're also coming out because they have a purpose, right? Mm -hmm. And they have the knowledge, they have mm -hmm. the skills, um, and they've done it through their own will and through their own passion, right? And that takes emotion. That takes a certain amount of 
of of uh, emotional appeal, right? Because I think um, at the end of the day, you can't do this work. You can't do the work that we're doing here, Alan, without caring about the community. You know, no, you, you can't live in this community without having emotion. Like I said, right? There, there's so many issues that our communities face, not only environmental and environmental justice issues. Uh, but like you were mentioning, the ice threat, there's immigration issues, there's health issues, you know, poverty issues, you know, uh, reentry issues, the criminal justice system, poor public schools. There's so much we're facing. Again, right, if you do not have emotion, or if you invalidate someone, someone's emotions after growing up, in the Inland Empire, growing up in Fontana, growing up in, in cities like this, then my question to you, like, who is the one with the problem here, right? The person with the emotion or the person who lacks the emotion? Again, right? Lack of emotion, the major trait of psychopaths. So I'm questioning our electeds, like, what side are you on? Do you have the emotion or are you eliciting the other, tra the other you know, are you displaying traits of a psychopath. I like to think that that our electeds um, would hear our residents and have some kind of emotion, but that hasn't been the experience so far. It's been a very cold experience, and I mean, I won't go into much detail, but we had uh, we had a campaign we we're working on, and it wasn't pretty. You know, mm -hmm. one of the worst experiences I've had so far in my professional career, and I mean, it's frustrating. But at the same time, you know, people are fighting. And people are not giving up. And I think, um, you know, the job we do here is critical to their to their success, right? And to, and to their well-being and really our well-being, right? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, we come from these communities, right? Mm -hmm. We're not outsiders. We're not coming in. We're people that actually live in these communities, mm -hmm. that actually care. Um, we're people that know someone or that know someone that knows someone yep. that experiences some kind of disease or... Mm -hmm breathing complication so we don't take this lightly you know and so i think yeah i think um re reiterating your point i think if these elected officials or anyone for that matter in the community that doesn't take into account the emotions of people mm -hmm. if they're questioning why we're so emotional or so passionate about the issues that we address then i would say hey what's your problem you know yep, exactly so but anyway, Alan, any last comments that you want to make before we uh, sign off here? You know, just, uh, you know, growing up in Fontana and, and, and seeing where the city's headed and knowing there, there, there are opportunities there uh, amidst all the challenges. Um, I do really hope that we can, you know, see what's going on before it's too late. And that, you know, we can find new leadership and a new vision for the city before it's too late. And I think, you know, I think we're on our way. So that's, uh, I'll end on that note. It's, you know, positively, I think we're on our way. So Awesome. Well, that was Alan Hernandez, Executive Director with CCAEJ. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Anthony, for having me.